Since my last video, the weather in the UK has changed a little. We've been having heavy rain with grey flat skies. However, the month leading up to this video, the weather has been beautiful with fantastic sunrises, blue skies and some really nice temperatures. In terms of photography, I've been quite fortunate because when I'm off work, I'd go for my daily walk along the river and I'd always take my camera with me. Me and Helen, we would usually leave the house around 5.45 a.m. and walk down to the river for sunrise when it was empty. Obviously, I never took a tripod with me and some days I wouldn't even take an image. But on the odd occasion, if the conditions were right and the image presented itself, I'd fire off a few handheld shots before moving on again. Even though I'm back at work now, I've still managed to grab a few shots here and there. I work in one of the Cambridge colleges and it's got beautiful grounds. The college holds around 800 staff and students, but as it currently stands, there's only around 50 people occupying the entire college complex. It seems surreal to see such a fantastic building that's normally filled with so much life and energy look eerily quiet. If you've been kind enough to watch my last three videos, you'll know that I've been enjoying my time recently just photographing the songbirds in the back garden. I've set up fake logs, fake perches, and I've photographed the birds from an old fishing bivvy in order to capture them from a low vantage point. The apple blossom is well past its peak now, and so I'm looking for some alternative perches and compositions. We all seek inspiration from our peers, and over the last few weeks I've seen some cracking images on social media from other photographers who use props for the birds to land on, and so this week I thought I'd give it a go myself. I wanted to take full advantage of the weekend and so I thought I'd set the first prop up on the Friday evening. This will give the birds a few hours to get used to it before I come out for sunrise tomorrow. I didn't have anything particular in mind and so it was just a case of scouting the garden. I thought the old sundial would be a good start and I wanted to set it up next to the fake log. That way the birds could flip from one to the other plus they were used to feeding from the log. I thought the sundial looked quite nice but it was too low to the ground. I needed it to be higher in order to take full advantage of the bushes in the background. We have a concrete plant pot near the house and I thought this would be a good base to sit the sundial on but it's heavy, really heavy. I wouldn't advise anyone to try and move such a heavy object on their own, but it's okay for me because I'm a professional. I also discovered that flip-flops don't flip or flop very well when going backwards, but as I now had the momentum, I wasn't going to stop. The sundial did look a little wonky, which I suppose doesn't really matter, but I thought I'd straighten it the best I could and just hope that it didn't fall over overnight. Time now to just sprinkle some mealworms on the surface and let the birds feed on them during the evening. Usually I would have grabbed the camera and a few beers and just sat in the hide for a few hours. But Friday nights are when me and the guys record the photography pubcast. And so it was time to get set up for that and then head down to the garden in the morning. The weather on the Saturday started off cold yet sunny, but the best light comes between 3.30 and 6 p.m. This is when the sun is behind the hide, but as the forecast was meant to change as the day progressed, I thought I'd take advantage of the sunlight while I had it. Not only that, but as the day was about practicing with props, I wanted to see what worked and what didn't, and so the position of the sun could play second fiddle to the composition. And so I started shooting earlier than I normally would. 
I removed the other bird feeders as I didn't want them to compete with the food that I'd placed on the sundial. I did however place some food on the log as the birds were used to feeding from that and from there it was just a short jump onto the dial. The activity on the prop wasn't great and so after 30 minutes or so I decided to cut off the food supply on the log by simply covering it with a banana skin that was in the hide. I should add that there's nothing special about the banana skin but it was either that or an empty packet of pickled onion monster munch. The sundial definitely made a good prop for the smaller birds such as the robin or the blue tits, especially if they held onto the sail itself. I wasn't so keen when the jackdaw landed on it, as he looked more like an executioner waiting for his first victim, rather than a picture postcard photo. All in all, I think this prop will work. If I have some nice afternoon light and a good flow of small birds, I certainly won't hesitate in using it again. Next up was the terracotta plant pot that didn't hold any flowers. Each opening made for an excellent feeding bowl and with their wide rims it gave the birds easy access to perch on. I placed the terracotta pot on top of the sundial's pedestal, which was still precariously balanced on top of the concrete planter. At this point it did occur to me that after watching me cover the gazebo in black plastic and now trying to balance garden objects on top of one another, my neighbours may be thinking I'm having a breakdown. I framed up the pot and decided to start shooting in full frame rather than using the APS-C mode that's on my camera. I've been using APS-C which is the equivalent to shooting on a crop sensor camera a lot recently as it uses a lot less storage on the SD card and it writes the data to the card a lot quicker. But as I didn't quite know where the birds would land and how each image would look, I decided to give myself plenty of wiggle room and stick to full frame. It didn't take long for the birds to arrive and I was sure that this was going to be a good choice of prop as there was so much activity. The light wasn't particularly great and so I thought I'd grab some video before turning the camera over to stills and to be honest, it was really nice just watching the birds feed. Once I'd switched back over to stills, my initial optimism of obtaining a good composition started to fade. Even though the prop was a great feeding station, it was almost too busy to achieve a good clean shot. The multiple openings and small birds just seemed to blend into one another and every shot that wasn't on the top rim just looked messy. The only way I could make this object work without having any flowers in it was by cropping everything out of the frame except the top rim. This worked quite nicely and if I'd have had better light I think I'd have been fairly happy with the results. I was just about to leave the hide and change props when this landed, a sparrow hawk. I was sitting back in my chair when it landed and so I couldn't quite make out what it was at this point as I'd never seen one in the back garden before. I also didn't want to lean forward too quickly and press my eye up to the EVF in case I scared it away. And so I slowly moved my hand up to the camera and just started shooting. After a quick burst of 20 or so frames, I then pressed my eye slowly to the camera, refocused and fired off another 20 or so before it eventually just flew off. 
At this stage I was so pleased to have photographed my first bird of prey and I immediately went inside to show Helen the images on the back of the camera. But little did I know that in a few days time it would return again, only this time the images would be worthy of printing. The day was pushing on now and the light was very intermittent. I searched the wood store for a branch that I could use vertically, but everything that I had looked far too polished. In other words, they had been pre-cut with a chainsaw and the ends just looked far too smooth. I did take a few shots, but they just didn't sit right with me, and so I didn't dwell on this prop for too long. Perhaps on my next long walk, I'll keep my eyes open for a more natural looking perch. With this in mind, I tried something a little different and slightly more contemporary. In the shed, I found a glass jar that Helen had made and I decided to give this a go. I simply filled it up with some water to give it more stability and waited for the right light to hit it. With any photography, light is such an important factor and as a landscape photographer, I know how fleeting that light can sometimes be but equally it can either make or break a photo. A subject with flat light will look very 2D and uninspiring, and no amount of processing can replicate good conditions. And so if possible, it's important to wait for the right light, as the right light can really transform an image. During the week, I borrowed a few items from the college gardeners. The traditional wooden spade handle always seems to work well in an image and so I tied it to the log and waited for the robin or hopefully a blue tit to land on it. The birds were mainly feeding from the log and taking no notice of the spade and so I took my eye off the camera for a few seconds just to pour myself a coffee but when I looked back up the sparrow hawk had returned. This is why I love landscape photography. It's a slow form of photography where I can gain my composure and take my time before taking the shot. I can honestly say I've never stood behind my camera in Snowdonia and had that gut wrenching feeling that a mountain could fly off at any second. Quickly reaching for the camera and fumbling with the controls, I noticed that the hawk had its back to me and was sitting in between the shovel, metal stand and the tree, and so the composition wasn't exactly great. The sunlight was also being broken up by the leaves on the trees, and so sometimes the light would hit the bird's face, and other times the bird's face would be in shade. It didn't hang around too long, but a few days after these shots were taken, it returned again. I didn't manage to photograph it, but it does look like this bird is now going to be a regular visitor to the back garden. At the time I did manage to fire off around 50 images before it left, and when I have more time I may look back on these images and play around with them a little more. Perhaps I'll try some different crops and put a little bit more time into the processing, but for now I'm happy to have captured them and they can sit on my hard drive until a later date. Something else that I borrowed from the college was an old metal watering can with the longest spout I've ever seen in my life. The trick here was to get the birds to feed from it but I just couldn't think of a way in order to place the food that it wouldn't be visible. Then I had a light bulb moment. I simply filled up the watering can with water and then placed a small Tupperware container inside the watering can and just filled it up with mealworms. All I had to do was make sure that the water level sat at the correct height. This way the top of the container would be below the rim of the watering can. This seemed to work well and once the robin knew where the feed was he was happy to feed quite happily. Or rather he did but once the blackbirds arrived, they pushed him off and they hogged the food. I do think this particular watering can was too large, 
but in principle I think the prop works really well and I'll be investing in a smaller one at some point in the future. A very simple yet effective prop with the small terracotta pots. It was easy to place the food inside of the pots and the size of the pots worked well for the size of the robin. As always this week has been fun and I've learned a little about which props work and which props don't. And so hopefully over the next few weeks I'll find myself a nice natural looking perch that I can erect in the garden. Maybe a rugged perch that really suits that sparrow hawk which I'm really hoping returns. Maybe a few more terracotta pots, a smaller watering can or even some fancy Wellington boots may look nice. I suppose the list is endless. With regards to my hide, I'm probably going to dismantle it soon, but this doesn't mean it's going to be the end of my backyard photography. In fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. The thing is, I'm going to set up another one. One that's a little bit more comfortable for me and something that's more in keeping with the garden. But I'll explain about that on another video. And so if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing and tapping that small notification bell for future videos. Also give it a like and please leave me a comment. But until my next video, be kind and stay safe.